It's safe to say that 2020 was quite the uh, memorable year. It was definitely unlike any other, and the world of gaming hasn't been exempt from the roller coaster ride. Our Twitter feeds regularly brought us news of console shortages, Cyberpunk 2077 shenanigans, remakes, remasters, and Animal Crossing being literally the only way to survive quarantine. I think there was also an election at some point? Who knows anymore? Anyway, while all sane people are looking ahead at the year to come, we're choosing to look backwards at the year we left behind, just for the sake of digging up the biggest gaming failures of 2020. That's who we are as people, and you can't change us. Similarly to 2019, we've combed through Metacritic's lowest rated titles for the year, discarded anything with fewer than seven critical reviews, and put them all neatly into a list that we can gaze upon and cry. Join me, won't you? I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 worst reviewed games of 2020. Number 10. The Elder Scrolls Blades, Nintendo Switch. 42%. This installment in The Elder Scrolls represents a departure from Bethesda's usual strategy of simply releasing Skyrim on a bi-monthly basis. Its repetitive gameplay, outdated graphics, and veritable motherload of microtransactions failed to engage players in a way that other Scrolls titles have succeeded at even years after their release. Strangely, Bethesda aimed to condense and miniaturize a fantasy experience that is enjoyed mostly due to its vast possibilities and sense of adventure in lands unknown. Bold move making a game's USP the removal of the series' USP. While it wasn't particularly heralded on mobile devices, it certainly didn't fare any better for its Switch release, which seemed downright ugly on both the console's modestly sized screen and when played on a TV. Dropping frame rates, crashing, and poor graphics really impacted the reception of this reimagined dungeon crawler. Granted, it still has some of the hallmarks of the franchise, but overall, The Elder Scrolls Blades is like an empty soul gem. Soulless. <laughs> Got him. Number 9. Gleamlight. Nintendo Switch. 42%. Ironically, for having the word light in its title, one of the main complaints about this action platformer is that it's simply too damn dark. And I don't mean dark as in edgy, I mean that it's hard to actually see where you're going or what you're supposed to do. Bleak worlds are a dime a dozen in indie games these days, but it still needs to effectively communicate gameplay, story, and tone. While the interesting art style is quite lovely, the design choices often leave too much to trial and error, which contributes to frustrating gameplay. To be frank, it's a case of style over substance, and buying it over Hollow Knight, its clear inspiration, would be an act of madness. The generally unfavourable reviews shine a harsh light on Gleamlight's blatant issues, whether it be the characters feeling unresponsive, unfair platforming sections, or poor choices of music. The concept seemed promising, especially with its beautifully drawn stained glass world, but it didn't quite deliver. For a Hollow Knight clone, it at least got the hollow bit right. Number 8. Street Power Soccer. PlayStation 4, 41%. You know what we're like here at Triple Jump, just a bunch of footy-obsessed lads who love that team kicking the ball and definitely shooting a hole in one, am I right, fellow, <coughs> fellow hooligans? Regrettably, Street Power Soccer just didn't fulfil our sports ball needs, even though it did promise to combine sick style and high-energy action in a completely over-the-top experience. As hype as it tried to be, it seemed to utterly bore critics with its flawed implementation, technical shortcomings, and appearance that wouldn't look out of place on PS3. It may claim to be street, but it's just not that cool. Oh, it thinks it is, with its jarringly mismatched music, green screen Sean Garnier, and sick skill shots, but it ended up so meh. The in quotations skills are nothing more than a single press of a single button, followed by an uninspiring animation that leaves you feeling rather unskilled and frankly uninterested. It's brave of anyone to release anything remotely football related while FIFA still monopolises the genre, but with a price close to £25 at the time of recording, it's hard to justify purchasing this title for its bravery alone. Number 7. Tamarin. PlayStation 4, 40%. At first glance, Tamarin looks like an ideal nostalgia fix, but beyond the charming facade lies remarkably dull gameplay and, well, not much else. This mascot platformer is indeed pretty to look at, and we're sure that younger players might enjoy the cute animal characters, but it's a far, 
far cry from the engaging gameplay of, say, Banjo-Kazooie or Super Mario. In fact, any younglings who were drawn to the vibrant, fuzzy aesthetic had better prepare for a tonal change that seems to come straight out of Watership Down. The woodland is set ablaze and grotesque insects start to murder the fluffy forest creatures. The main character is then armed to the teeth with an arsenal of guns and returns Rambo-style to unleash carnage on the insect menace. It's jarring, to say the least. But hey, what about the platforming? Well, that can be avoided entirely by casually using the long-range jump. That's right, it's a platformer with no mandatory platforming. Tamarin is playable, but it's hard to recommend it with the likes of the remade Spyro and Crash 4 being just as easily available. Number 6. Remothered Broken Porcelain PC 39% in a year of remakes and reboots, we also got a Remothered. This one may not have won any Horror Game of the Year awards, but it definitely got handed the sticker for most awkward title at the 2020 finish line. Expect the usual survival horror environment, complete with locked doors that must have been invented by the same company that does all those Resident Evil security systems. You'll also be pursued by an unkillable brute that can only be momentarily stunned by… wait, is… Is this Resident Evil? Short answer, no. It's a painful continuation of remothered, tormented father. Something about an evil nun and science and the convent burning down and a conspiracy and a missing little girl and okay, let's just say that the plot probably enthralled people as much as the gameplay did. Honestly, the real frights come down to the sheer number of bugs, control issues and terrible combat, which when combined renders the game nearly unplayable. The game will certainly give you a horrific experience, but not quite in the way the developers intended. Number 5. Ark of Alchemist, Nintendo Switch, 36%. Once again, we've got a game that looks like a charm, but doesn't have the substance to back it up. The chibi characters in Ark of Alchemist, while cute, don't leave you feeling enchanted or invested, and though the Switch's library is filled to the brim with awesome RPGs, this sadly isn't one of them. RPGs, after all, require the player to feel involved in the world, characters and plot. It's all about being immersed in the experience. These games often get players to spend hundreds of hours exploring the environments, expanding on the storyline via side quests and getting to know their ragtag group of comrades. Ark of Alchemist, by contrast, delivers a poorly put together dungeon crawler that lacks any hook to pull in an audience for hours on end. Even if you're a fan of the Atelier series and you're desperate for some extra alchemy, this one isn't going to give you the same warm feeling. Actually, if you're a fan of the Atelier series, go play one of those games. I know you haven't played them all yet. No human being has. Number 4. Fast and Furious Crossroads – PC 34% in the Fast and Furious movie franchise, there's always time for one last ride, especially when it's for family. No family loves each other enough for Fast and Furious Crossroads, however. The game is unforgivably boring, especially disappointing when the franchise is known for its bombastic stunts. It's drab, flat, uninteresting, and worst of all, each time I see the title I think it says Fast and Furious Crosswords, which might actually be more fun. Any player drawn to this game thanks to brand recognition is sure to be woefully underwhelmed by sad graphics, yawn-inducing missions, and driving mechanics that just aren't fun. It fails to capture any of the ridiculous action of the franchise and instead uses it as a vehicle, pun intended, for cashing in. There's just not enough speed, enough fury, enough of anything really. Crossroads theoretically has all of the ingredients, but slightly mad studios pulled it burnt and lopsided out of the oven. Number 3. Dawn of Fear – PlayStation 4 – 33% Dawn of Fear tries, oh lord it tries, to recapture the magic of classic survival horror. Needless to say, as it's on this list, it fails profoundly. While the developers' love for old horror games is so evident, Dawn of Fear is nowhere near the same level of quality as its inspirations. The tragic storyline is laboured, with our hero Alex returning to his family home following the suicide of his mother, death of his father, and sudden death of his brother. I'm just glad he didn't have a dog, because that thing would have died too. This low quality love letter to Resident Evil takes everything that made its senpai so memorable and delivers it in a way that just doesn't work. Sadly, it doesn't even reach the heights of so bad it's good a la deadly premonition. The fixed camera angles cause frustration instead of thematic tension, weak aiming controls are annoying instead of adding to the fear, and the translation is riddled with errors. It won't scare you, but playing it may well scar you. Number 2. 13. Xbox One 32%. 
It took a while for Xbox to show up on this list, but Microsoft shouldn't feel too bad about debuting so high. This stinker of a remake scored among the top 10 worst games for practically every platform. Loosely based on the first five volumes of the 1984 Belgian graphic novel of the same name, 2003's 13 was designed with a comic book style presentation that earned it a cult following. 2020's remake was criticised for its changes to the unique art style, its difference in game design, and the glaring technical and audio issues. Fans of the original were left disappointed by the AI bugs that caused gameplay to feel arduous and strained. It has graphics, yes. It has sounds, yes. Heck, it even has gameplay play, but none of it actually delivers. In fact, the game was received so poorly that publisher Microids had to go on record and apologise for the state that it's in. 2020 was a killer year for remakes, with Final Fantasy VII and Demon's Souls racking up some great reviews, but this one couldn't even match the quality of the original, which wasn't all that great to begin with. Number 1. Tiny Racer Nintendo Switch 29% Appropriately, Tiny Racer earned itself the tiniest score. This uninspired title from Ice Torch Interactive doesn't do anything you haven't seen before from better, more capable racing games. Okay, granted the cars are small, but other than that it's more or less an insipid circuit racer with a physics system worse than a teenager's first game coding project. While it does have multiplayer, don't bother inviting your mates to a few laps and a few laughs unless you want to irreversibly damage your friendships. If you spent your childhood racing your toy cars around your bedroom floor, ramping off hardbacks, Harry Potter books, drifting expertly between beanie babies and avoiding your hamster's exercise ball, don't expect this game to recapture any of that magic. Instead, you'll just be sat there, head in hands, after resetting your car's position back onto the track for the millionth time, wondering if it was really worth downloading this instead of Cyberpunk 2077. Actually, it probably was. And that's our list. Seems like even video games weren't immune to the curse of 2020. What games do you think should have ranked amongst the worst? Are any of these actually hidden gems? We know they aren't. Don't you dare lie to us. Which of them do you hope to see featured on Worst Games Ever in 2041? Let us know in the comments below. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon. Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.